the only change was uh where was it right here where we game type in uh, in pong uh this said new pong game type and that's really the only change that we've made in this entire file uh, so we're going to keep these files actually from episode to episode, and there's going to be very little change at all. We're just going to change the game type and everyone. Um, it's going to make our game. It, it's almost like we've we've set up an interface for our game, and all we need to do is just change out one piece, and we've got a whole brand new game. And that one piece is this uh, snake game type file. Um, so yeah, that's that's really everything that's that's new in here. Um, so what do you guys think? Yeah, let us know what you guys think. I know someone in chat has already asked for a particular way to change the game. Yeah? Yeah. And I think it's super evil. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I do not agree with this at all. But okay. So um, I actually forget who. I'm, I don't know if I wrote it down. I just wrote down the idea. I didn't write down who said it. But someone in chat said, um, make the fruit only appear in corners. Only appear in corners. Oh wow! That's so mean. That's so that mean. Is mean. <laughs> that is mean. Very easy to do in code, but very mean. Oh, it was Fragged Rabbit. It was you. <laughs> I was like, you're evil. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, show us how to do that. Okay, so there's there's actually I believe two places where we place fruit. Um, we have let's see when when we collect the fruit we replace it and then at the start. When we set the game up, we place an initial fruit. So um, right here, this is uh, this is one area where we place it, and uh, this is the reset game. So this is the initial place we place it, and then uh, the other place is uh, where we where we collect the fruit uh, right here. This is another place where we place it, and these lines are basically identical. Um, we can actually select this, uh, right click, uh, refactor, extract method. So we'll call this place new, place new fruit. So now what that's done is it's cut out that line and it's added a function, where would it have put it? Right here, it's added this function place new fruit. It just basically cut that line out, wrote a new function for us, and then put, paste that line inside that function. So now uh, back up where where we were initially in our reset game, uh, fruit location. Uh, instead of doing this, let's do place new fruit here. And if we run the game, nothing's changed. The fruit is still getting placed randomly. Mm -hmm. But it means that there's only one area now that we need to change the code for putting fruit only in the corners. Also, um, well, I, I left the snake starting in the corner. If we're going to put fruit in the corner, we don't want the snake starting in the corner. That's just cheating. I mean, uh, you could at least be nice and give them that one first point. Because getting, <laughs> getting it in the corner is going to be hard. But yeah, let's move back to the center. So yeah, the snake's now in the center. Um, but let's let's work on that fruit now. So um, let's see. Uh, we go to our uh, what was it? Place new fruit function right here. So in here we're we're doing a random value, uh, saying uh, give us a random x and a random y for our, for where we're going to put the fruit. Uh, it's uh, actually pull those out. We'll do fruit x equals this. Fruit x. And then we'll do the same for the y. We'll pull uh, pull this out. And fruit Y or fruity, if you will. I don't know. <laughs> we run it now. There's still no changes because we haven't actually 
told it to do anything different. We've just told it, uh, we're just telling it to do the same thing in a different way. But now we can change these values uh, to be whatever we want. We can, instead of doing random, or instead of giving us a, a random number between the area, the arena width and the arena height, uh, we can tell it to pick either zero or the arena width, um, and then zero or the arena height here. So let's uh, let's do that. So if I change this to two, it's going to give us a number that's zero or one. So we're going to use a ternary operator, and this will be either zero or it will be arena width. And then same for the height. If it's zero, uh, we'll make it zero. Otherwise, we'll make it the arena height. And where did our fruit go? Oh, uh -oh. It, it's because it's minus one. This is what we want because it's an array, and there it is in the bottom corner. Oh, man. That already makes me nervous. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm never going to be able to play this. <laughs> it's so hard. Top corner. <laughs> oh. I, I got one. I know you got one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> but there we go. It, it's always going to spawn in the corners now. The fruit is always going to spawn in, in one of the corners. <laughs> That's so hard. Uh, <laughs> what so, I'll do... That's so evil. So let me evil. copy this, and I'm going to undo changes for a little while till we get back to... Uh, yeah, till we get to here. You're putting it back to the way it was? Yeah. And now what I'll do, actually, um, I'll leave that in there. That, that was a good idea. I'll leave it here, and I'll comment it out. So now the, the game's going to ignore it, but if we want it back in, we can always pull that back in. Because maybe um, maybe at some point we'll want to we'll wanna make it so that when you get to, when you score 50 or higher, then the fruit only spawns in the corners from then on. And that'd suck. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, so there's your your fruit in the corner. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of other ideas that came out of chat while you were working yep. on that. Um, I think, so one of them was an actual idea for how to modify the game. Another was, I think, going over one of the bugs. Yeah. So, um... I guess we can just do it in order. The first was the modifier that came up, and they have asked that we try to change the speed of the snake after every fruit that you pick up. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Um, Sweet. So what we probably want to do is start out with a fairly slow snake and get faster and faster, right? Yeah. So let, let's start out with a, a snake speed of 5. And uh, in, our, in our reset, what we do is, well, in reset game here. Uh, this is when you lose. This reset yeah, every, is in the play. Every time you, yeah, every time you restart the game. So spacebar actually restarts the game. Whether you're you finished or not, it will always restart the game. Um, but what we do inside our reset game is we have our snake speed, and we set it equal to our initial snake speed. So we basically reset the speed of the snake every time you reset the game. So that means we can change this, the speed of the snake really whenever we want, and um, and then we, we we can still always reset it when we get uh, when we get um, uh, when we when we get game over. So what we'll do uh, when we collect the fruit, we'll just do snake speed plus equals. Uh, let's go with two to make it a little bit faster. Um, so it it might take. Um, might take, I don't know, four or five fruits before you start to really notice a difference. I like can see he's starting out pretty slow. 
Uh, I did actually notice a difference in the speed. Um, you see him getting oh, faster? Yeah, I see it. That was a close call, Carrie. It's because he speeded up right as he was heading into a wall. <laughs> I don't want to die because those then... lower ones are really hard. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah, they are really hard. Look, there it goes. <laughs> you guys couldn't have said uh, never spawn fruits on on the edge of the the world or something like that. You know, we had to go with something hard, like only spawn them in the corner. <laughs> but you can see he's getting pretty fast now. He's Probably about as fast as he was, but well, no, he's a little bit faster now than before we changed anything. Ah. <laughs> you see the difference when I start over, right? Yeah. Big time. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we could probably tweak that a little bit to make it fairer, however we wanted to, to make it make the player experience. If we wanted to be mean to them, we could make it actually increase speed faster. Um, we could have it start out fast if we want it to be mean. Um, but yeah, we can uh, we can do what we want now with the, the speed. We can increase it every time you get fruit. We could actually, uh, instead of having the speed increase every time you pick up fruit, we could just have the speed increase very slowly every time a snake moves. So even if you aren't picking up fruit, he just gets faster and faster. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at you go. Oh, I'm totally getting that, that last one before we move on. Okay. Nice. I can die now. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. So that's, that's how the, the speed changes. And yeah, um, if we wanted to, instead of doing 2.0 here uh, in the snake update right here, um, could throw it. Let me make sure I'm still in the function here. Yep, we could throw it in here, and we definitely wouldn't want plus two here. We'd want this to be like plus zero one here. So now, regardless of whether I collect the fruits or not, he's just going to get faster and faster. It might take a little while before you start to see him get faster, but I can feel him getting faster already. It's a little hard to see, yeah, but... Give him a second. I should just do laps around the arena and we can time him. <laughs> <laughs> That's this lap time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so he's just going to get faster and faster regardless. Yeah. And you can't really see him get, getting faster there, so that 0 0.01 is probably too small. If I make this 0.1, it's going to go crazy. I'm sure that after like 10 seconds, it'll be unplayable. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's taking longer than I thought. But this is what balancing I can is see all. I that about. getting faster. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness! Look at it go. <laughs> So even though I'm not even collecting the fruits, he's getting, oh he's getting really fast. <laughs> You're doing pretty good at not dying. Yeah, but I'm I'm just kind of circling around the center of the area. <laughs> trying to collect the fruit, on the other hand. Let me try and collect the fruit. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> oh, oh, you oh, I got, got one. one. And I died. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's how we speed the, the snake up. Maybe some a nice balance would be like 0 0.05, about half as fast as we were going, as, as fast as we were accelerating before. I think that'd be a pretty nice balance to our game. Yeah. So um, actually, do we have any art yet? It's probably a little bit um, early right, to figure out if we got... Yeah, I haven't seen any art come in, but I think that um, C5 is actually going to to do some art for us. But anyone else is welcome to do art as well. I have 
the artwork dimensions up on the screen. So take a look at those and send it to us. I also wanted to take a quick break and uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but our little uh, pre-recorded game of Carrie's has stopped because it's over, but it didn't it didn't pause on the end screen. So <laughs> did anyone catch what the last? Did score? anyone catch what it was? Because if not, I have the I have um, what his final score was. But if no one caught what the final score was, that means that what what we're coding is so interesting that our distraction isn't distracting. Them. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's good. That's, <laughs> that's ultimately very good. Um, yeah. But I don't see anyone in chat saying it, so I will say that Carrie's final score uh, is forty five. He got forty five points, which well, let me tell you is awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. So. We'll see if I beat that score in my pre-recorded thing. So I'm going to turn that on right now, too. I apologize if my my pre-recorded screen covers up anything else. Just give me a second, and I'll get it back to the right uh, dimensions. Um, but yeah, it's going to cover up a few things. I bet people were, like, 45. When I first got 45, I thought, wow, that that's kind of a lame score. But the game is harder than people are... Uh, giving it credit for the game is harder than I figured it would be. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I was shocked at how difficult this game was to play. Mm -hmm. Like shocked. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to make it so that we can see what the heck is going on. <laughs> but it's a little tough since my screen it was formatted correctly for Carrie's screen and not my screen. Silly me. <laughs> Okay, well that's going to have to work. And hopefully you guys can see that. If not, no worries. But yeah. And don't forget to keep guessing. Um, if you want to revise your guess, that's fine. We only had three people tweet out their guesses. So you can you can feel free to revise that now. But only at this moment. I will be watching to see <laughs> if you do it later on. But okay. So that is playing now, so you'll be able to see my gameplay there. And hopefully I can beat him. Hopefully. <laughs> but we'll see. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> you guys might not even be noticing it, but like, the 45 is a really hard score to get in this game. Yeah, if you guys have downloaded the game and, and are running it, maybe you, you'd have a better idea. Maybe we should say download the game and uh, run it right now and capture yourself playing it. And if you can beat uh, either my 45 or whatever Saber's score is. I don't know if she beats me or not, but if you can beat both of us and you can capture it and you can submit it to us by the end, then, uh, then don't even we'll... don't you don't even have to record your score. All you have to do is play the game and take a screen cap of the end of your high score yeah. and tweet it to us. Let's do that and tweet it to us. That way uh, we can see. We dare you to try and beat our top scores. We dare you because it's a lot harder we... than it looks. <laughs> We'll figure out a prize or something, right? We can yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. We have prizes all over the place. So so we'll get prizes to whoever actually guesses which one, Carrie or I, which one uh, wins our top and score by, battle. And by then. how much, right? Mm -hmm. And by how much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we'll see if that works. Yeah. All right. But, so um, yeah. yeah, what what should we do next? What do you guys want to see? Oh, that's next? right. So, um, sorry, they also mentioned in chat that they wanted to see. Uh, let me look at my notes. Um, so I think it was one of the bugs that's actually in the code that you point yeah. out, Carrie. Um, but they would like to know how to not have the fruit spawn in the tail of the snake. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when we when we spawn our fruit, what we've got to do is um, if it spawns inside the snake, uh, just pick another another place for it. Is probably the best way. Um, so let's, uh, where we do place, uh, place new fruit. Um, so we've got our arena width and our arena height. Um, what we can do, uh, let's see the best way of doing it. Well, we'll need to, need to do a, a while loop, uh, or or some sort of loop anyway that uh, that will check to make sure that until we have a valid fruit, basically. Um, see, fruit location equals null. 
in here. Ooh, missing semicolon. <laughs> and then, well, fruit location equal, well, fruit location equals null. Basically, figure out another fruit location. So now what we're going to do, um, we assign ourselves a fruit location here. Um, and we need to verify that this is a valid fruit location. And if it's not, we just need to clear it. Oh, is fruit location, why, why does it not like us? Oh, it's a non-nullable variable. OK. So uh, we could do fruit location equals um, rectangle dot, dot empty. That will work. Um, and then while fruit location equals rectangle dot empty, then do this. So if we run it now, should get the same. Yeah, the game hasn't changed by running it now. Um, we haven't actually fixed the bug yet. Uh, what we need to do after we've done this, uh, check that the fruit location isn't um, the same location as uh, as one of the sections inside our snake. And if it is, then set it equal to uh, rectangle empty. So uh, for each. Uh, Rectangle in segments. Okay, so this is oops, get rid of that guy. This is going to grab each rectangle um, one at a time, and it will give us this variable segment that we can then use to compare to our fruit location. So if segment dot x equals fruit location dot x and segment dot y equals fruit location dot y. In this case, we know we've just spawned the fruit on top of our snake. So uh, we can clear the fruit location or set it equal to um, uh, rectangle empty. And then we don't need to check the other sections because we know that we've already spawned on top of it. So, uh, so now that'll set us equal to empty, and then we'll go back up and generate another one. And we'll keep doing this until we get a, a, valid, um, a valid fruit location. Now, one of the problems with doing it this way is um, it can it can get slower. Like this this function is going to get slower and slower as the game goes on and the snake gets bigger and bigger. Because eventually there's going to be so much space that the snake is occupying, it's going to pick a, a random spot and the snake is going to be there. Then it's going to pick another random spot and the snake is going to be there too. And there's just so much space that the snake is in that it's going to go through this hundreds of times until it finds a spot that um, that it can actually put the fruit in. Um, Hopefully our player will be dead by then. <laughs> but uh, well, not the player, but the snake. Hopefully the player lives a lot longer than this game. But uh, but the snake will be dead by then, um, and and th we won't actually see this slow down. But uh, that's that's one problem that we could run into with this solution. But this will stop us from um, from hitting the uh, the snake. This will stop the snake from um, the fruit from spawning on top of the snake. And it it happens pretty rarely, so I don't know that just running running through it will will prove that we've fixed this bug. Um, we may have to take your word for it. Yeah. Or you guys download the code, implement the fix yourself, and then test it out for us and let us know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that will stop us from spawning a uh, a fruit on top of a snake. Yeah. Oh, something else we'd have to be very careful about. Um, in this case, if we brought back in the, the fruit only spawning in the corners, what would happen if the snake was so long that he could fit in all four corners at once? That's something we'd have to deal with if we were going to do that.
All right. What uh, what other guy have we got? Uh, what what other problems or things would we like to see put in there? So I know someone earlier in chat mentioned um, something about if we could create walls or barriers. Um, yeah, we certainly can. Um, Just to make the game even harder than it already is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we do for, for barriers is um, we, we'd probably spawn them just kind of the same way we spawn fruit. Well, we wouldn't spawn them the same way we spawn fruit, but we'd treat them like we treat fruit, except we do, well, we do our, all our collisions the same way, except when you hit them, instead of getting a point, you die. <laughs> that's, that's how that's going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, the collision, the, the algorithms for, for checking collision would all be the same as the fruit. So um, what we could actually do, uh, let me let me change the problem a little bit. Instead of having um, instead of having it so that uh, so that we have barriers, uh, we could have it so we have two fruits at once, or however many fruits at once that you want, and one of them will will score you points. Like the green one will score you points, and then the other one will poison you. And that's basically the same as barriers. You treat the same. You treat the barriers just like a, a row of poisonous fruit. Uh, so we we can actually do that, and then uh, or, or do we have do we have assets before we do that, or should I do that first? Um, and actually, someone sorry, I'm going to cut in. Someone actually just mentioned uh, they pulled the actual chat uh, block that someone posted for this. So Dirk the blacksmith in chat said he has a suggestion: make obstacles um, randomly throughout the arena, and he can code it himself and submit it. So we actually oh, asked yeah? them to submit that too, but we're going to go through it on the chat as well because it's a really good idea, and other people might want to learn how to do it too. Um, okay. So sorry, yeah. we're going to continue on doing this. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, yeah. But what was your question, Carrie? <laughs> uh, do we want to do asset stuff before we do? Like we've got new art. Do we want to get that we in? We do before? have new art. Yeah. yeah, I just sent it to you from C5, who was awesome and created some art for us. So yeah, we can put that in there too. All right. So we'll do this, and then um, and then I'll do uh, obstacles. Uh, let me just refresh my email. I wonder if I refresh my email, the bad things happen to Google Hangout. <laughs> All right, I'm still here, so that the answer is no. Bad things don't happen to Google Hang Hangout. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was checking Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, C5 changed his guess. He thinks that you're gonna beat me. With your score of forty-five <laughs> to my score of thirty-one, <laughs> which is what my current high score is right now in my pre-recorded gameplay. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm just downloading the art assets. Um, so I'll just be a second, guys. And. Don't forget, anyone else can submit assets as well. It's pretty easy to make these things. Send it to us. We'd love to showcase the artwork that you guys want to use. You can make games themed around other games that you really like. You can make like a sci-fi snake game. You can make an old western snake game. <laughs> C5 claims, I have no idea what this is going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give it a try. Um, I'm sure it'll almost look great. done setting it all up, getting downloading everything, and uh, and throwing it all in the right place. Oh, Speedbreaker, go ahead and uh, refresh your screen. It should say Community Game Development Episode Two: Coding Snake at the top. What was that? Oh, they're saying the name of our our stream uh, on Twitch. Oh. Is, it probably still says Dolls and Devs from Friday, but I changed it before we went live. So just refresh well, your screen, and then hopefully it'll show a different title. <laughs> well, we've got Dolls in here, and we've got Devs in here. Oh, it's kind of <laughs> true. We do our <laughs> Dolls and Devs. Dolls and Devs events once a Sunday. Or, yeah, one Sunday a month. So, yeah. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. so um, so I've just downloaded all the images that C5 gave us. So if I go to